I'm following the path that I hope to follow when we go to Vrindavan, finally. The first day, the plan is to go to the east side of the Jamuna River and visit Ravel and Dauji and the Damodar, Leela Place, and a few other places. Brahmandagat. 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 Mother DeSoto looks in Krishna's mouth and sees the universe. Brahmandagat. It's a nice place. Very quiet, very simple. And then at the end, she gets, she wants to, she gets very uh, con confused. So she goes to a place where she can be peaceful. So we're going to go there. That's the first day, east side of the Jamuna. Now, the first place we're going to go the next day, which is on the west side of Jamuna, is Radharani's place. And then later on, we're going to go to another one of Radharani's places. And it's going to be a Radharani Yatra. <laughs> this other place is uh, Suryakund. Maybe we'll go there tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, let's see. Suryakund. So Yavat is the place of Srimati Radharani. It's actually the ancestral home of Abhimanyu's mother. Who's Abhimanyu? Abhimanyu is the so-called husband of Srimati Radharani. So-called husband of Srimati Radharani. And her husband, Abhimanyu, uh, when married to Radharani, she moved to Yavat, which is their ancestral home, her, like her husband's, so-called husband's ancestral home. His mother, Jatila, and his sister, Kutila, they lived there. Before <coughs> she was married, I'll give the details, a little bit of the details about her being so-called married to her so-called husband and so-called marriage. <laughs> but there are some other circumstances related to Srimati Radharani's marriage, which many of you have some idea of. In um, Brahma Vaivarta Purana, there's a description of a, a, an occasion when Nanda Maharaj was with little Krishna taking care of the cows. Krishna was very attached to the cows even when he was little. And near the shore of the river Jamuna there's a forest. It still is there. Mandiravan. And um, I th we may be visiting there, I'm not sure. Bandiravan. And as he was very far from Nandagram, all of a sudden a big storm came. Heavy winds, big rain, and unseasonal situation. And so, what to do? He was torn between taking care of the cows and taking care of his son and he had to do both and he wasn't sure what to do and according to the the description in Brahma Vaivarta Purana all of a sudden here comes Radharani now Radha, this in this painting Radharani looks much bigger and actually Radharani and Krishna are almost the same age but anyway that's the artist and as she came along, um, she thought, well, Radharani is very responsible. If I give my son to Radharani to take care of, 
and she can take him safely back to Nandagram, then I can look after the cows. So as they were making their way back, they both manifested teenage forms, and Lord Brahma descended along with many demigods, and they performed this fantastic, opulent marriage, according to Brahma Vaivarta Purana. And then after the marriage, they circumambulated the divine couple and went their separate ways, and Radharani and Krishna assumed their normal size, and nobody knew. They didn't advertise it either, that they were married. Brahma Vaibharta Purana. Now it's not mentioned beyond that, but that's from Brahma Vaibharta Purana. A second reference is in relation to a pastime at Tili Pukur. Pukur means pond. Tili has to do with the color, the turmeric looking color that the water became tinted by. The situation was, since Radharani was very young, she had been given a, a benediction by Dervasamuni, which we're going to hear a little bit about, a benediction by Dervasamuni that Radharani would be able to um, cook, where wherever she cooked, each thing she cooked wouldn't taste the same. And every, whoever ate her cooking would live a long life, would live, have good health, and be always victorious in all of his undertakings, just by eating Radharani's food. And that becomes um, important in relation to another pastime we're going to narrate. It has to do with the pastime at Yavat. So remember, whoever eats her cooking will live a long life, will always be victorious in his undertakings, and will have good health. So, when um, Radharani got home, and informed her mother, Kertida, what Dravasamuni said, naturally, she shared it with her good friend, Yashoda. And Yashoda said, oh, can you have your daughter come cook for me? Cook for, cook for Krishna. So he'll have a long life and good health and always be victorious in all of his undertakings. So that was the arrangement from when she was a little girl. So every day, she would go with her friends from Varsana, where her mother and father lived. And even before the sun came up, they would go very early and cook Krishna's breakfast. There's a special kitchen in Varsana that is said to be the kitchen, or it's a reproduction of that kitchen. It's like Radharani's kitchen. With special this and special that to make special cooking for Krishna. And I haven't been able to find it. There's a wonderful painting where Radharani is watching through a crack in the door as Krishna is eating to see if he likes it. You know, of course he likes it, but he knew that she was looking and sometimes he'd make faces like <laughs> And then after Krishna had breakfast, she would go home. And uh, actually she didn't go home right away, she went to a place where she and Krishna would have a rendezvous near Vindakund because Vindakund is very close to Nandagram. So Krishna would go out with the cows but then do a little detour to meet with, with Radharani near Vindakund. It's like a whole uh, set, set of things that would happen each day. 
So one day, as would be expected, Mother de Soda had developed transcendental, very intense affection for Radha. She loved Radha like she loved Krishna. And you know how mothers are. She started thinking, wouldn't it be nice if Krishna and Radha became married? Wouldn't it be nice if one day Krishna and Radha became married? And during those times in Vedic culture, girls would be married at a young young age. They would live with their new husband, but they were they would know who they would be married to. Was it saved a lot of problems later. So she was thinking like that and thinking like that. And one day, in a very playful mood, she decorated Radha's hands with haldi and laughing and laughing and laughing, and like playing. So it was it was like an invitation that she could be engaged in, for marriage. And it was funny, and, and they were laughing, and the gopis were laughing, and when the breakfast was over, she started walking back to Varsana. And as she was walking back to Varsana, it struck her. What are my parents going to think when they see all this haldi on my hands? And I didn't speak with them, and this isn't right, and she started developing some daughter anxiety about what her parents might think of this. And so she went to this place, this pukur, and she rinsed all the haldi off her hands. Now I can't read what this sign says. Can you read what the sign says? Yeah. What's it say? Yeah. Okay. Some other word for pini pukur. Something it says. Whatever it says. And so she washed her hands in the little pond. And from that time on, the pond became yellowish. Now, when she, by the time she made it back to Varsana, the parents already sent the message. <laughs> there, were, there were no text messages, it's just the parents told them that Radharani that Mother Jasoda is making this offering that their 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 daughter should marry Krishna. So she didn't have to say anything, they already knew, and they were very, very happy. And as we heard already, the, the name, well, maybe you didn't say it here, the place where Radharani grew up and as a little girl, until she was about five years old, was at Ravel. Ravel. It's on the eastern side of the river Jamuna. And Ravel means the, the, the place of a, a wealthy householder, a wealthy landlord. It's the meaning. So um, he was, he was, Vishabhana was wealthy. And with his wealth, he and his wife decided, let's make a, a, a gesture of acknowledgement that, that Krishna and Radha should marry. They loaded up a bullet cart with valuables and sent a whole bullet cart of valuables back with the driver, the message saying, we accept. And Nanda and Jasoda were in anxiety because they didn't have the means that Vishabhano had, although he was king, he had cows, but he didn't have all the kinds of valuables that Vishabhano sent, so they were in anxiety. So they thought best, before we do anything, we should ask Purnamasi. And Purnamasi is Yogamaya. She orchestrates Krishna's pastimes, and she said, no way. Um, this isn't an auspicious time. No way. We can think about it some other time, but no way. And of course, by her influence, they forgot everything. So there was no marriage. But 
that there was a, an attempt, an idea, that they could be married. And here's a little bit of information um, that I shared already, but I want to read it because it's, it's pretty impressive that the information from our acharyas that the gopis that performed the Katyayani austerity for one month on the bank of the river Jamuna, they received Krishna's promise that they would marry them. They would become his wives. They wanted to become his wives, all of them. And Krishna's promise is upheld. So, but it happened later and it happened in an intriguing way. So I'm going to read a little bit. Just some scriptural references. One, it's the starting one is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. I mentioned this previously. In Adi Leela chapter 4, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says about Radharani, there are various expansions of Radharani. Some, one of her expansions are the goddesses of fortune in Vaikuntha. Another expansion of Radharani are her gopi friends. Another expansion of Srimati Radharani are Krishna's queens in Dwarka. These consorts all proceed from Radhika. Now going to Canto 10, Chapter 59, where um, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writes in his commentary, the Vrajagopis are supremely complete forms of Krishna's pleasure potency, Ladini Shakti, and their Prakash manifestations, the queens of Indwarka, are perfect. BBT commentary expands it a little bit. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur quotes Kartika Mahatmya section of Padma Purana. Kaishore Gopakanyasta Yovane Raja Kanyaka. Or those who were the daughters of cowherds in their early youth became royal princesses in their maturity. Unquote. The Charya adds, quote, Therefore, just as the Lord of Dwaraka is a plenary expansion of the Supreme Complete Lord of Sri Vrindavan, so his principal queens were our full expansions of his supremely complete pleasure potencies, the gopis. Lalita Madhava Gargi talking to herself. Gargi is having a conversation with Purnamasi about a lot of things. I have heard from my father's mouth that although the gopis headed by Chandrabhanu's daughter Chandravali and the Dwarka queens headed by Bhishmaka's daughter Rukmini are expansions of the same spiritual potency. Nevertheless, their forms are separate and distinct. Now it is said that with the aid of the Yogamaya potency, each gopi is identical with a specific queen and each pair of gopi and queen is a single person in a single form. It must be so. I shall perhaps understand it later. That was Act 1, Scene 1, verse 41, towards the very beginning of the Lita Madhava. And then Act 4, Scene 1, verse 36, Uddhava speaking with tears. Their hearts burning with pain. 16,100 gopis offered prayers to the goddess Kama for Krishna's return. As they were praying on the Jamuna shore, a very ferocious demon violently kidnapped them all. Narakasura. 
of the 16,108 gopis, not a single one is still in Braja. Next, Act 5, verse 18. Narada says, All the girls of Dwarka city and the girls of Raja village are not the same persons, although are they not the same persons appearing in different forms? The girls of Raja were overwhelmed with love for Krishna to please them by returning them with their beloved, Yogamaya transformed them into the women of Dwaraka. They now think of their previous existence in Vraja to be like a long dream, and they think Uddhava's visit and their own journey to Kurukshetra to be only stories. Aside from these 16,108, there are other gopis also, Why should I reveal this secret? He just did. <laughs> Act 9, verses 9 through 13. Nava Vrinda. Nava Vrinda says, On the pretext of an invented quarrel, Narakasura, the powerful son of the earth goddess Bhumi Devi, kidnapped 16,100 lotus eyed girls from the village of Vrindavan. Lord Krishna, the master of all transcendental pastimes, then killed that uncivilized demon who had troubled the entire universe in this way. The Lord rescued those girls whose eyes were all filled with tears. In hearing this is Sharat, the person, personality of the Sharat season, the autumn season. Are these girls the gopis of Gokula? Nava Vrinda. How could there be any doubt? Even a small shrub of the faint reflection of devotion to Krishna is never without fruit. What then is of the unprecedented festival of bliss that is the immortal tree of the gopi's love? So that was a nice yes. They are the same. Sharat, then why do we hear that these girls are the daughters of various kings? Navarinda says, Narakasra became enchanted by the charming beauty of these girls to deceive the goddess named Kama Devi. He spread a false rumor that these girls were all the daughters of kings and they were going to be given in marriage to the eligible bachelors among the demons. And finally, Sanatan Goswami confirms the same. Brihat Bhagavatamrita 1704105. This is um, Krishna speaking to his queens. Narada has gone there, etc. He's called the queens. He wants to tell them all about his love for Vrindavan and the residents of Vrindavan. Of the young gopis in Vraja, 16,000 attained, excuse me, here's the verse, some 16,100 gopis had with vows worshipped Katyayani to obtain me to bring my mind somewhat to peace by seeing a likeness of them, I married the same number of you queens here in Dwarka commentary. Of the young gopis in Braja, 16,000 minus the 100 attained Krishna's intimate association. The Mathura Mahatmya states Gopyo Gayanti Nrityanti Sahasrani Cha So Dashaha 16,000 gopis were singing and dancing. The present verse specifies the number of those most fortunate gopis as 16,100. Although the word cha implies that there were actually more. 
all the gopis were extremely attracted to Sri Krishna, but only some of them earned Krishna's complete satisfaction by undergoing the Katyayani Vrata to obtain him as their husband. These were the gopis who most zealously wanted Krishna as their own Srimad Bhagavatam 10.22.4 records their prayer. This is the Katyayani prayer. O oh, Goddess Katyayani, great potency of the Lord, O oh, possessor of great mystic power, mighty controller of all, please make the son of Nanda Maharaj my husband. I offer my obeisances unto you. In the last paragraph, no one can match the gopis' attractive sway over Krishna, but Krishna accepted his queens as substitutes in his pastimes at Dwarka. The principal queens of Dwarka are in fact direct expansions of the principal gopis. So it's pretty conclusive. I mean, the, the, the scriptural reference besides the commentaries and Rupa and Sanatana Goswami's writings is Mathura Mahatmya, section of Padma Purana. So, including Radharani, became married to Krishna in this way. Now, in this way, because there's 16,100, she wasn't one of the 16,100 that was kidnapped by Narakasura. There were um, eight others, and she's one of the eight others, and she was Satyabhama. And there's a very uh, intriguing narration, drama, a plot, of how Radharani became Satyabhama and married Krishna, the way that she married Krishna. Very interesting. In Rupa Goswami's writings. It has some, some, there's a thread. Here's one of the threads in the whole narration. Maybe you remember when we were doing the Govardhan Parikrama where Krishna and Balaram on the evening of Holi were performing dance and singing singing very wonderfully and Shankachuda came along just ignoring Krishna and Balaram and started whisking the girls away to go to Mathura to take them to Kamsa as his kind of like his agent and the gopis called out and Krishna chased Shankachuda he left the girls and he ran for his life Krishna smashed him took the chanka, the conch-shaped jewel on his turban, gave it to Balaram. Later he instructed Balaram give it to Radharani. Radharani wore it on a chain. After Krishna departed in Rupa Goswami's drama, she decided to give up her life and feelings of separation. She entered into the Jamuna and the sun god came and lifted her and took her to his abode along with the shanka or the jewel. And that same jewel was later given by the sun god to Sutrajit. Sutrajit now has the jewel and then it was given to Krishna and Krishna gave it back. And so in this way, <coughs> Satyabhama became married to Krishna. But there's it's a, the explanation that's in um, Rupa Goswami's drama doesn't have all of that. It's like, how did she get to be with Satrajit anyways? So it's, it's very intriguing. Someday. Someday. So Radharani also became... Satyabhama, and you're one of Krishna's queens in Dwarka, or her, her direct expansion. Now, have you ever wondered? I'm sure you've wondered. What were the circumstances 
of Srimati Radharani's so-called marriage with Abhimanyu. Now, I had a wrong impression. The wrong impression I had was corrected. But the wrong impression was that um, during that one year when Krishna manifested himself as all the cowherd boys and, ca and calves, and it was... It's mentioned in Garga Samhita, there's a verse specifically that says during that year all the boys were married to the girls, but it was Krishna marrying the girls. So I had wrongly assumed is during that year that Abhimanyu married Radha. But that wasn't that's not correct. What happened is once again Rupa Goswami in Vidanta Madhava indicates that Mukhara you remember her name, right? Mokara. The grand maternal grandmother. So, Kirtida's mother, or Radharani's grandmother, Mukara, was in anxiety about Radha's safety. Because Kamsa had already sent Shankachuda to try to kidnap the gopis. And he was, she, Mukhara, was concerned about Radha's safety. And so she, Mukhara, decided to have Radha married. And involved in this consideration was Purnamasi. So it was the so-called marriage that Purnamasi so-called approved. And according to Vidanta Madhava, Radha was taken from Vrindavan from Varsana in Vrindavan to another village, Shantanu Vasa, while the marriage with Abhimanyu was being arranged and when she was married with Abhimanyu, then Radha's li living place moved from Varsana to Yavat. There she is, Mukhara. <laughs> In one of the books I've been making reference to, which is uh, Bhakti Ratnakar. You getting used to that name by now, Bhakti Ratnakar? Bhakti Ratnakar is a book that's describing the associates of Mahaprabhu after the departure of Mahaprabhu. And the author, I'm saying this again for like the fourth time, so it, it, it kind of will sink, because it, it took, takes a while for me to get all these names sorted out. Narahari Chakravarti is the author. In that book, it's a, a substantial section is Raghava Goswami. Remember that cave where he went in to do his chanting? Sometimes called Raghava Pandit. He took Srinivasacharya Naratam on a visit to all the places in Vrindavan. And there's some explanation about each place. And when, he, when they visit Yavat, Raghava Goswami says, by the influence of Yoga Maya, what to speak of Radharani herself, Abhimanyu, is not even able to touch the shadow of Radharani. And I searched, I couldn't find it, but it's one of those things that we hear in ISKCON all the time. Abhimanyu is the shadow of Krishna. He's not Krishna, but he's shadow of Krishna. But I haven't found a scriptural reference for that kind of an ISKCON thing. So here's a map. You've seen this map before. Brajamandala map. One arrow is pointing to Radhakund. Another arrow is pointing to Nandagaon, that where Krishna resided with Nanda Maharaj. And now above, an arrow is coming down to Yavat. Yavat. And by the way, Ter Kadamba, we're going to visit probably in two days. Ter Kadamb is in between the two. Ter Kadamb is in between the two. 
this term yava vata yava is this reddish dye that sometimes ladies put on the bottom of their feet and vata is a, a banyan tree which, or at least a, a general tree but particularly a banyan tree yavata here's a train stop yavata or yevat and noted specifically for the about this place is in the background that's Jatila mother of Abhimanyu and she's holding back Radharani trying to keep Radharani from associating with Krishna but Krishna is more clever and he, he enjoys this obstacle that cre is created by Jatila his cleverness gets a challenge and he always wins As I mentioned, Vrishabhana was wealthy, so when they were married for his daughter, Radharani, he built the palace. And we'll see this image a couple more times this evening. And it's related, the image is related to the Gauri Leela pastime, but up there is Srimati Radharani, down here is Purnamasi, there's a little vendor selling whatever he's selling, and it's Brinda Devi having a discussion with with Purnamasi about Krishna's pastimes. Nice painting, very nice painting. So here's some pastimes that take place at Yavat. One time, according to Bhakti Ratnakar, there's that name again, Bhakti Ratnakar, uh, when visiting Yavat, he mentions to Srinivasacharya Naratam, uh, on the north side of Yavat, there's a forest called Kokilavan. And Kokila is the local name for cuckoo birds. The cuckoo birds make a very distinct sound. And in the forest of Kokilavan, they do their cuckoo sound regularly. And Krishna, knowing that, what Krishna did is he went into the Kokila forest and he made the sounds of a Kokila bird. <laughs> now many of you know that when one bird makes a sound, it's kind of like one dog barks and 500 dogs will bark after the one dog barks. Or in, in Gitanagri, some of you have been to Gitanagri, and there's peacocks all over the place. How did he get that there's peacocks all over the place anyways? Well, before there was a law against bringing birds and animals from foreign countries, somebody, smart somebody, brought a male and female peacock and, and they reproduce very uh, uh, substantially. So the whole Juniata County has a host of peacocks all over the place. So when one peacock does the peacock sound, there's a chorus that responds. And then it subsides until another one makes that sound and then the chorus starts up again. And it's just like that. So Krishna went into the forest of the kokila birds and made the kokila sound. And they started singing and singing and singing and singing very loudly. There you see in the painting, they've got their mouths open, <laughs> singing kokila sounds. So inside the palace of Radharani, uh, Brinda Devi heard, not Brinda Devi, Lalita Devi heard, and so she said to Jatila, can you hear that sound? It's so sweet. Can we go and see the coquila bird singing so nicely? Oh, that would be very nice, but hurry back. And so there they are knowing what's going on and Krishna knows that they know what's going on and they had nice pastimes together in Kokila forest. So this is described in Bhakti Ratnakar. In Ujvala Nilamani, what's Ujvala Nilamani? It's a um, companion literature to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. 
both are written by Rupa Goswami. There are re conjugal relations between Radha and Krishna that he did not include in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu because people might not appreciate it, but he ex he saved that for this Ujjwala, and not just conjugal pastimes, but so many, 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 many details about um, Rasa. So this is a pastime from Ujjwala Nila Mani. And Krishna came at night. And in a pilu tree, there's a photograph of a pilu tree, he started making this sound of a coquila bird. And um, Jatila understood, wait a minute, this is not the right time. Coquilas don't sing at night. So that means Krishna's here imitating the sound of a coquila and she doesn't see very well. She's half blind. She had a stick in her hand and started hitting the ground. There's a, there's a, we'll, we'll see shortly. There's a pilu tree inside the courtyard of the temple. So, you know, saying bad names and calling Krishna's bad names and so Krishna had to stop. <laughs> and she was standing guard to keep Krishna away from Radharani. And after some time, she fell asleep. <laughs> so that Krishna knew she was asleep, and so that gave him the opportunity to be with Radharani while Jatila was asleep. They enjoyed their pastimes, and he snuck out before, she, before the morning came. And when the morning came, Abhimanyu came out and saw mother what are you doing here <laughs> and she you know said what she said and he said you you're you're too much worried but if you think that this is actually going on i'll tell you what i'll lock the door i'll lock the gate the front gate so krishna can't get in so the next evening krishna came and sure enough the gate was locked so what did krishna do he went in the back in a berry tree grove and started making his coquila sound. <laughs> but Radharani couldn't get out because the gate was locked. And so he spent the night, this is Ujjwala Nilamani, very disappointed that he couldn't meet with Radharani. Here's a verse from Padyavali, Rupa Goswami's writing or compilation from by Sri Hara. When Lord Krishna arrived in Radha's courtyard for their rendezvous, his tinkling ornaments sounded like the cooing of cuckoos and other birds. He suddenly heard the door open and he also heard the continual jingling sound of conch shell bracelets when he heard the arrogant, jar, it says Jarati, but it's, I think it's meant to be Jatila, call out, who's there, who's there? He became pained at heart. He spent that entire night hiding in a tree in the corner of the courtyard. Pastimes at Yavit. There's the Pilu tree. There's our Dina Bandhu. And there's a lot of pilgrims. And uh, there's some of our Chinese devotees with their translator translating Dina Bandhu's wonderful kata. Here's a from up on the roof, looking down, it's prasadam time. And they're up on the roof taking prasadam. There's the dome above the altar. We're going to go down and take a look at the altar shortly. Um, I found out this Arun Bhattacharya is a really good photographer and I was commenting about it when I was in Detroit and it turns out hey he was from Detroit mm -hmm. so one of the devotees there sent a text message to Arun Bhattacharya saying Maharaj was appreciating your artwork <laughs> he wrote back saying oh how nice said so he's a real person he has a, he's, he has <laughs> good photography here's uh, not on a busy day where there's the, the entrance to the temple and uh, 
here's another shot of the, the temple. And there's the deities. Very beautiful deities. Look at Radharani with her head tilted. Radha Kanta. Radha Kanta. And notice Gornatai up top. That's Iskan's mark. Here's a close up. Very beautiful deity. Very, very beautiful. See, Darshan of Radha Kanta is worth the visit, even without all the wonderful stories of Krishna's pastimes. She's a very amazing deity. Going back in time, this was um, some image off to the side, kind of neglected, as you can see. Jatila in the mid middle, Abhimanyu on her left or our right, and Kutila, the brother and sister, Abhimanyu and Kutila. Iskan devotees felt sad about the conditions, so they fixed it up and they made it like this. And after some time, they replaced these murtis and replaced it with this. There's Arun Bhattacharya's photograph and a clock. <laughs> Somehow mixed in with the photograph. And just about four days ago, Guru Das sent. This is what they look like. Now, look at by their feet. They don't, it's not very tidy. But, you know, that's how the Pujaris are there. Now, the Radhakanta are, are nicely worshipped, and this doesn't get the same attention. And over to the side, there's a deity of Kali. There's a pastime where Radha and Krishna were enjoying together inside the house. And Jatila said, they're together. Abhimanyu, catch them. And he opened up, it was a closet. And Radharani said, they're going to catch us. And he said, don't worry. He just manifested a blackish form of Goddess Kali. <laughs> and there's a long tongue of Goddess Kali sticking out in the forearms. Looks like eight arms, six arms. And uh, Abhimanyu paid obeisances. And Jatila, why do you say these things? <laughs> Radharani's worshipping Goddess Kali. It's very nice. Here's just the other day. Again, it's kind of a mess all over the place. No, this is this is Arun Bhattacharya's. I just took his name off. But see the Panchatattva painting in the front and the big mess everywhere else. Here's a painting of the pastime. There's uh, Abhimanyu with the stick in his hand and his mother, Jatila, seeing the gopis are worshipping Goddess Kali because... It was actually they were worshipping Krishna. And he paid obeisances and scolded his mother and said, please stop telling these stories. Krishna is very clever. Dravasa Muni. And this, there's two, two versions of Dravasa Muni giving his benediction. I like Bhakti Chaitanya Swami's version. I'll say that one and we'll say the other one. Uh, also, one day, the gopis were uh, enjoying each other's company, walking through a field, and lo and behold, there's Dravasamuni, and so they ran and paid their obeisances before Dravasamuni, and he was appreciating their enthusiasm. They said, is there some service we can do for you? And he said, actually, yes, I'm very hungry. I'd like something to eat. And they looked at each other and said, well, we're off in the field. We'll run back home as quickly as we can. We'll, we'll get something and bring it back. And Dravasamuni said, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm hungry and I want something right now. Uh, <laughs> so Radharani got some water and mixed it with some of the dust of Vrindavan and made some Vrindavan biscuits. And they offered a biscuit to Devasamuni, who said, What? You expect me to eat this? And the gopi said, You don't understand. Radharani is so expert. Try just one. He looked at the biscuit, looked at the gopis. He took a bite. 
and it was so good. He ate all the biscuits. <laughs> and then another version is he was visiting King Vrishabhanu's palace and the gopis that were with Radharani became terrified. They ran in all directions but Radharani was not afraid and she went to him and asked for some service. He asked for something to her prepare something. It was so nice so the, that he gave the benediction. By my mercy, whatever you cook will be more delicious than nectar. It will increase the life of whoever eats it. Whoever eats your cooking will never know disease, invalidity, or defeat at the hand of his enemies. And so that was the start of Radharani's then going to cook for Krishna every morning. And for all the duration of time that Krishna remained at Nanda Maharaja's palace, that was still the case even after her marriage. The gopis each day making their journey to go to cook for Krishna along with her assist Srimati Radharani, they felt such freedom. And their, their life as in, in the village life in Vrindavan was very, very wonderful. There's a pastime that take, took place at Yavat that's written in Nectar Devotion. There's a Iskan painting depicting it. One time, Krishna was making himself look just like Abhimanyu and you know behind his back he's hiding his peacock feather and his crown but he then when it was told that Abhimanyu was coming back he confided in Jatila you better watch out you know that Krishna he's such a rascal he's going to come to your door imitating Abhimanyu don't let him in take a stick and smack him so there she is ready to keep get out of here we know who you are and my mother you, you've gone mad what happened to you so this particular pastime is narrated in relation to the gopi's smile it's a particular type of smile where they're smiling and showing their teeth the pastime is narrated in relation to that particular detail, nectar devotion, or Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't take this from some other PowerPoint. I just took a new slide, put this blue thing on top of it, so it's, you know, it doesn't just look like a blank white and then put some text so it wasn't importing the old powerpoint into the new powerpoint version that's not what it's not, this jumpity 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 thing is not <laughs> caused by that but fortunately that's the split screen so I can read it this has to do is from Kartik Mahatmya of Padma Purana again this is uh, indicating the Gopastami day. The eighth day, uh, when the eighth lunar day of the bright fortnight of the month of Kartik. So as, the, as it's moving towards the full moon, the second half of the month of Kartik, the eighth lunar day of the bright fortnight of the month of Kartik is known as Gopastami. From that day, Lord Vasudev served as a cowherd, whereas previously he attended the calves. So it's going to start jumping if I move it again. But it says that two years previously, exactly to the day, is when he began herding the calves. And after two years of herding the calves, he graduated to herding the cows. He was four years, two months. It's just like 
there's such detail with all of this. So when when Krishna was three years and four months, that's when they all shifted from Gokul to the western side of the river Jamuna. And it's a very detailed description of all of that, that activity. And the place where they stayed is near the river Jamuna called Chatikar. Chatikar. And they stayed there for some time. And Krishna was really happy because that's his home, Vrindavan. And he, he followed with his father to herd the cows. And he was wanting to herd the cows. The, the, the elders were saying, he doesn't herd the cows. They just, he just goes out to play. And they follow him. They're so attached to him. So he went, and Krishna asked his mother, can I herd the cows? And she said, they're too big. No. So he went to his father. They're too big. <laughs> and he was, like, first insisting. So they made a concession. On Gopastami Day, on the bright, the, 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 you know, the, the eighth day of the waxing moon, in the bright fortnight of the month of Kartik, you can begin. So they had a big festival. You know this pastime? They, 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 that's when Krishna got his first flute. He got, you know, so many gifts so he could take care of, taking care of the calves. Big festival. Big, because this is the family business and he's going to, you know, start with the calves. Four years, two months. His mother wanted him to give him shoes. He refused. He said, how can I wear shoes when the calves don't wear shoes? She said, you don't understand. The calves already have shoes. <laughs> Nature has given them very hard shoes. He said, I'll wear shoes only if you make shoes for every one of Nanda Maharaj's calves. Four of them for each calf. Then I'll wear shoes. I can't have what the, what the calves don't have. Doesn't say what happened after that. Probably they didn't make shoes for the calves. <laughs> So, Gopastami, there's a nice a reason for saying this. There's a nice pastime that jumps around a lot. <laughs> okay. It's a pastime that took place at Yavat. It's not a scriptural one. There's another term for it where it's just like a commonly accepted one, including in Iskhan. But one of Krishna's dear friends has a complexion very much like Radharani, and his name is? Sh huh? Shridam. Shridam. Subal. 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 And at this, during this particular pastime, or at this time, Radharani was being, was in a sulky mood. So she wouldn't respond to any of Krishna's messages to meet with her. <laughs> And Subal recognized Krishna looked really remorse. He looked really sad. Day after day passed. So he made a plan. He said, I'll make some arrangement. I promise you I'll make some arrangement so that Radharani could come see you. So his plan was, he went to Yavad and he told Jatila he was looking for a stray calf. He believed the calf went inside their courtyard. He wanted to look for his calf. She said, I don't trust you. You're Krishna's friend. If you're going to go look for your calf, you better hurry up. So he went in, and he went to Radharani's room. That's not where the calf was, by the way. <laughs> and because he has a complexion like Radharani, he suggested, why don't we switch clothes? You wear my clothes and my turban, and I'll wear your clothes, and you can go just take the calf and, and, and go outside, and Jatila will leave you alone. You can go meet Krishna. He's, he's really beside himself. I don't know if he's going to survive. So it touched Radharani's heart. She was sulking, but it, her heart moved. But she said, how is this possible? 
we don't look the same. He said, when you can carry a calf across your chest and just speak in my voice and Jatila, she won't know the difference. <laughs> so sure enough, it worked. She spoke in Subal's voice when Jatila said, oh, looks like you found the calf. Yes, I found the calf. Thank you so much. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be going now. And there she went. And when she reached Krishna, it, he, he, Radharani, looked just like Subal. And he said, were you able to find her and bring her? He said, no, I wasn't able to find her. And or I wasn't able to bring her. And Krishna was so crestfallen. And Radharani, seeing that mood of Krishna, was so moved by Krishna that she broke her sulky mood and they, she dropped the calf so he, he could see it was actually not Subal but it was Radharani <laughs> of the same co complexion and they enjoyed pastimes together for some time. Now in Iskhan temples they uh, <laughs> use this pastime where Radharani is carrying a calf. Look, there's the rope, there's the calf, there's Krishna with a big cow. And here's in Houston Temple. And here's in the Ireland Temple. I was very surprised to see Pragosh did this. <laughs> You know, so it's now a popular, it's not a scriptural, just a popular pastime. And I don't know how Subal got out. <laughs> I'm going to try to find out. But there, there's some something that happened where he was able to get out. I forget. Now here's, uh, here's Jatila. One time, Radharani returned home forgetting that she was wearing Krishna's yellow cloth across her shoulders. But Radharani's mother-in-law, Jatila, saw this yellow cloth instead of the customary cloth of another color. She says foul play and angrily stared at her daughter-in-law. At that time, Vishaka tried to protect her friend Radharani by speaking the following words to Jatila. At the festival, the young girls, their hearts fluttering with happiness, playfully doused Radharani with a strong mixture of turmeric and water, which dyed her silken shoulder cloth yellow. That is the reason this cloth is now yellow, O oh, noble Jatila. Why do you stare at my friend Radharani from the corner of your crooked eyes? <laughs> there she is again. One day, Chandravati's friend Padma informed Radharani's mother-in-law Jatila that Radha and Krishna were enjoying pastimes together in Bandiravan. Jatila arrived at that place and saw Radha and Krishna together. At that time, the following conversation occurred between her and Radharani's friend Shama. Jatila. Agitated by a foolish girl, I have come here. What am I to believe that the foolish girl is Padma? Shama, I have firm faith in you. Tell me, what is happening here? Shama, what I tell you is the truth. I'm not deceiving you. What you see is Subal, dressed up like a girl, clowning with Krishna, the funny comedian of Raja Village. So here's Bandiravan today, and it's one of the places that uh, Dina Bandhu likes to take us. That place is, there's a, there's a cement or stone sitting area. And Dina Bandhu sits up on that area and then everybody sits on the ground and a big bandera uh, tree in the bandera forest. It's now a little over an hour we've been at it. I'm gonna go at it for another 15 minutes or so. Just past time. We're not going to go beyond Yavit. I don't think we're even going to finish with Yavit. 
there's a, a book, a well-known book, uh, with different pranks, that's how it's translated, a moonbeam of sheer astonishment, Chamatkar Chandrika. This is one of John Rani's paintings. And I'm going to narrate a couple of the pastimes that are from this book. One of them is the box pastime. Now I could summarize it or I could read it. Any preferences? I mean, summarizing it is, I'm prob when, I, when I go to Vrindavan, I'm probably gonna just have to summarize it. But while I'm here, maybe I'll read it. It's, it's because the else do some mix. One day, in, Vars in Nandagram, Krishna saw his mother packing a box. So he asked her, is this box for me? What is it you're keeping so carefully within the box? My son, why do you need to know? Just go outside now and play with your dear boyfriends. I really want to know what you're doing. If you don't tell me, then I'll not leave this room. Yasoda, within this box, I'm putting sandalwood sticks, jeweled pollen of the camphor lotus, musk, red kuncum powder for making nice scented body ointments, and for making different kinds of dresses, I'm packing extremely valuable cloth, waist ornaments made of tiny tinkling bells, earrings, bangles, uncommonly rare lapis lazuli gems, lapis lazuli gems, emeralds and pearls. Krishna, all these things you're packing in the box, are they for me? <laughs> or are they meant for my brother Balaram? My delightful son, I will tell you if you will listen. There is another box that I've already prepared for you, and it is much bigger than this one. It is filled with very valuable jewels and cloth. I've also prepared a similar one for your brother, Balaram. Krishna, if you are not preparing this box for me or for Balaram, then who are you preparing it for anyway? Who is such a dear object of your affection? Yashoda, just as providence has bestowed you upon me as a result of my meritorious austerities performed in the past, in the same way there is one daughter here in Gokula who is like the medicine that sustains my very life. She is just like soothing camphor from my otherwise burning eyes. It is her clothing and ornaments that I'm keeping in this box. Lord Brahma has created many different feminine qualities such as beauty, good behavior, devotion to superiors, shyness, simplicity, humility, and so on. But there's one girl who is such that when all these good qualities take shelter of her, then only can they become great. Usually, if ordinary girls take shelter of some feminine qualities, then the girls become great. But there is one girl who is so wonderful that when all those good womanly qualities take shelter in her, then the qualities themselves thereby become truly glorious. This is most amazing. This girl's name is Sri Radha, and it is for her that I have natural love and affection. So Krishna hears Radha's name, and he starts to get goosebumps. So he tries to cover his goosebumps with his cloth and continues to pester his mother. My dear mother, who is this girl? Whose daughter is she? And where does she live? How is it that you have such intense love and affection for her? Kindly explain everything to me. My dear son, Listen, from the jewel mine of my girlfriend Kirti Da's womb has arisen a sinless, matchless jewel of a daughter. By the shimmering waves of this jewel's aura, she is illuminating the sun itself. 
Usually, the sun makes ordinary jewels shine brightly, but this daughter jewel born to Kirtida and Maharaj Rishabhanu is so effulgent that her aura makes even the brightest summer sun perk up and shine still more brightly. She goes on. It's more beautiful. It's nice to hear glorification of Radha. This girl is verily the personified austerities of King Vrishabhanu, and she lives at the palace that he made for her at Yavat, along with her husband, Abhimanyu. But just now, her husband has arrived here at our home in Nandagram. He is outside with your father, Nanda Maharaj, tending to some household affairs. When Abhimanyu comes to this inner chamber to see me, before leaving, then I will tell him in sweet words, Oh, Abhimanyu, please take this box yourself and, carrying it back to your home, kindly offer it to your good wife, Sri Radha. Scene changes. Into the mix comes the maid servant named the Bangalatika. And she says, Oh, Queen, there's two expert goldsmiths just outside who you called for and they want to speak with you. So Yasoda turns to Danishta and says, Oh, Danishta, I'm going out now for a few minutes in order to arrange the manufacture of Krishna's ornaments, crowns, earrings, and bracelets. Please stay here and keep everything safe. So she goes out. Just then, Krishna, along with his confidential boyfriends, headed by Subal, uh, go to the box and take everything out of the box. <laughs> Tell Tanishta, please see that these items get to Srimati Radharani. And Krishna jump, jumps in the box. Krishna jumps in the box. And Subal and the other boys put on the lid, looking just like it was before, and all the stuff is with Tadishta somewhere. Yasoda returns. She sees the box. And Abhimanyu also comes to offer his respects to Yasoda. And before he goes home, she says, this is a special gift. I'd like you to say, the f remember these following words, because this appears like a refrain like four times. Oh, you who give pleasure to my eyes. Oh, you who bestow fame and glory upon Kirtida. Oh, Radhe, within this box, I have sent you an extremely brilliant aura, Krishna. It consists of ornaments just befitting your body to be decorated. And I am sure that you will cherish them to the utmost by all of these dear things, may you become radiantly decorated every day. Thus achieving great fortune and happiness, you may become enthused with newer life forever and ever. Abhimanyu, surely I'll do this. I'll carry out your order. And he lifts up the box. He finds it's very heavy. And he's thinking... I'm rich. <laughs> I'm now going to be a competitor for my good friend Govardhan Mala because I'll have so much wealth. That's his mind. And Krishna's in the box being carried to Yavat, laughing his way, knowing what's, what's going on. That foolish, dull-brained coward Abhimanyu. <laughs> Krishna's giggling inside. He reaches his home, says to Jatila, look at this. Mother Jasoda provided this, and she asked me to say the following. And it says the whole thing. Hearing all this, the foolish old woman Jatila becomes blissfully overwhelmed. No, Abhimanyu wants money, 
and Jatila has something similar but a little different. Today, by the power of great fortune, a wonderful thing has happened. Obtaining a matchless gift today, my daughter-in-law will now become very pleased with my son Abhimanyu. That's her thing. My dear son, this box is so heavy that even myself, your wife and your sister, together, God cannot possibly lift it, so please take it inside. Run around his room, tell her what you're supposed to tell her. And so he recites everything as he was told to recite it. Radharani, just seeing the box in the room, starts to become ecstatic. Radharani addresses Lalita, my dear girlfriend, this dreadful abode of my mother-in-law is completely pervaded only with the most depressing, miserable suffering. So how is it that my left eyelid, arm, and thigh are suddenly dancing without any reason? It seems as if no possibility whatsoever is of observing such an auspicious sign here. What to speak of obtaining the benediction of seeing such a sign come true as long as I'm trapped here in this horrible place? <laughs> Lita replies, Sri Radhe, I can only guess that within this box is a most fascinating Manohara ornament. <laughs> Your limbs twitched as an auspicious indication of obtaining such a rare gift, my dear girlfriend, this type of twitching is only indicative of obtaining the absolute zenith of good fortune. Oh, Lolita, right? just by seeing this box, my mind has become surcharged with an indescribably ecstatic mood. I can't even begin to try to put it into words. Opening up the box, that has just come into my home, I will now see what jeweled ornament is inside that will bestow such great fortune upon me. Abhimanyu places it so they can open up the box. What's inside the box? What's inside the box? The girls open the box and Krishna comes out of the box. <laughs> Seeing him there instead of the valuable clothing, ornaments, and cosmetics, all the girls who are surrounding the box exclaim, Ha-ha! <laughs> oh my goodness! What is this? Oh! As they clap their hands, joyfully laughing and giggling. Sri Krishna, the abode of all artistries, feels fully satisfied with his own prestige, exhibiting majestic motions of such mild and soft, gentle manner. Then Lalita says, I mean, it's, it's a long statement, but um, strictly following the order of your three superiors, proclaim yourself your own ideal behavior to the world by such practice of righteous etiquette. You're following, you're supposed to do all these things. Go ahead. You're just following the orders of superior. Become decorated with the jeweled ornament that was sent in the box and thus dutifully honor the order of your three superiors. Radha becomes embarrassed and then she smiles and says, my dear Lalita, a rascal thief has stolen all the clothes and ornaments <laughs> they were given to be by Ma Yashoda. Taking them out of the box, he has kept them in some other place while keeping himself hidden within. Go right now and explain all this to my mother-in-law Jatila and quickly bring her here. <laughs> Lalita says to Krishna, Oh, clandestine rendezvous lover of Radha, rascal carried by Abhimanyu. You rode on Abhimanyu's head in order to rendezvous with his own wife, Sri Radhika. <laughs> by doing this, are you desirous of seeing the earth become completely bereft of all chaste women? Well, all right. What's done is done. But now you should immediately return all the cloth and jewels that you stole from inside the box. If not... 
then by bringing it to me here, I will expose the real truth of your fame and glory. <laughs> Krishna. Oh, my dear Lalita, your girlfriend Radharani is very crooked. And she is extremely skillful in serving her own selfish purposes. I entered this box while playing at home, and your girlfriend sends her husband to forcibly carry me away. <laughs> and the box bringing me here just to be framed with this bogus accusation. And then he, the story concludes, My dear Radhe, I became fascinated by smelling the, the natural wood fragrance of this box, <laughs> sending all the items it contained to you via Danishta. I then climbed into the box just to make myself nicely scented. Right at that moment, your husband happened to come along by chance and brought me here. <laughs> And that's one of five stories. <laughs> and I, I think we'll have to carry on another time because it's 8 o'clock. That's a nice story. Radharani's bitten by a snake. We'll say that one two days from now. Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur. So... I don't know how we're going to do this in Vrindavan. There's so many nice, that's why I'm going to have to go to three places. Ravul Yavatan, Surya Kund. Let's see if there's some discussion. A little abrupt, but... Krishna Maharaj. We know that Krishna is all-knowing and then he's covered by Yoga Maya for his pastimes. I was wondering if it's a similar thing with Radharani and Lalita. Like, did Lalita know that Krishna was in the box before she opened? We don't know what she knew. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem so. They were surprised. something that you know you're not surprised by. But so it, it's part of the savoring of relationships or loving exchange where something unknown becomes known and then changes course and so forth and so on. Doesn't seem so. So, in his position more uh, prominent than that of uh, Satyabama, like you hear a lot of stories uh, relating to Rukmini, and so that she being uh, Chandravali, how does that work out? How does that work out? Well, it depends. Um, here's two examples where it, it, it it's not it's contrary to what you said. There's three. One of them is the killing of Narakasura. Who is with Krishna when he goes to kill Narakasura? Satyabhama. And he takes Satyabhama so he can, he, he knows that she's adventurous. So he, he's giving her an, an, an adventure. And then when he takes Aditi's earrings back to Lord Indra, that's, there, there's two different pastimes. There's one that's described when uh, the, when Dwarka was built by Vishwakarma, Indra was very much appreciating and gave the Parijata flower, Parijata trees, but now he's not part willing to part with the Parijata trees. So our Acharyas say it's a different whatever you call it, you know, species or different type of parijata. So he, he, he gave some but didn't give 
the most fragrant one, and that's what he would have had a big battle just over Satyabhama Wadding and Parijata tree to one up Rukmini, who got a Parijata flower, I want a tree. And I haven't read it yet, so this is the third example, but in, in the third example, um, he, he's very careful. Shiva Maharaj writes in his Krishna Sangati that on more than one occasion Krishna visited Vrindavan with Satyabhama. I haven't read, so I can't, you know, answer. But, you know, Krishna does things with Satyabhama that he doesn't do with Rukmini. In Brihat Bhagavatamrita, she has a special role when she doesn't come when Krishna wants to say, you know, explain to all the queens and Satyabhama is playing hard to get, she doesn't come. So Krishna has to send a special messenger to get her to come. So there's exchange. she's just who she is and Rukmini is who she is and they're both special. So I wouldn't say Rukmini is more special. I think that uh, uh, that kind of uh, that type of an impression comes from um, maybe there are stories in other Puranas or somewhere which has been um, kind of uh, circulated. She, she's honored. And you particularly, let's say, she's honored by Sri Vaishnavas. But, you know, the, the, the temple, if I'm not mistaken, the temple in, in Chennai is Satyabhama Krishna. It's not Rukmini Krishna. Is that correct? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Nobody knows. Somebody can, can you try to find out from somebody in, in Chennai? You must know somebody in Chennai. What's the name of the deity? You know Krishna Shakti? I know her, but I'm not in touch with her. Okay, I'm in touch with her. I'll ask her what's the name of the deities. I think it's Satyabhama Krishna. In any case, she's not one up. They're, they're both special. Yeah, the, the pastime which is uh, kind of uh, heard a lot about um, Rukmini putting a tulasi leaf in, in weighing Krishna, you know, Satyabhama, everybody else, they were putting gold or whatever and Krishna wouldn't balance in that. Um, they, something like that, those kind of stories are um, more commonly known and I guess it doesn't matter. You're from South India, so you probably know a lot of those stories. Anything else? Yes. Well, yesterday you had mentioned uh, that when Arjuna um, took took the gopis from uh, he was taking them from Dwarka to Hastinapur. Dwarka to Hastinapur. Yes, on the way some cowards, uh, he was defeated by them. When we find that description in the Bhagavatam, and the part that I missed, just one clarification is then. Were you saying that those cowards took them to Vajranabha and that's how they arrived there and then, then they went to Uddhavakunda? How did they get... Uh, when, when Arjuna loses them... Then he, didn't, he didn't lose them. He, he lost... There, there was a conflict with the cowherds and he was unable to defeat the cowherds. He was like marveling with Yudas here. Able to defeat you know, great warriors, they can't defeat cowherds which tells me that my ability to fight against the, the great warriors was Krishna. It doesn't say specifically that they usurped the queens. It doesn't say that. He just lost, he was protecting them and he was defeated in protecting them. It doesn't say specifically they absconded with the, the queens. It doesn't say what, one way or the other what happened after that being defeated. It does indicate that he made his way to Hastinapur. And from Hastinapur, the, the arrangement by Maharaj Prikshit was they should stay with Vajranava. So they went to Mathura and they stayed in the palace of Vajranava. The, 
one of the interesting, there's many interesting things, but one of the interesting things about um, Puranas, including Srimad Bhagavatam, is they're definitely not chronological. You really have to become familiar with the whole picture to really understand you know, chronology, because it's, it's, it's not, the emphasis is not on chronology. Like I spent about, I don't know, I spent a lot of time, I spent a few weeks trying to sort out uh, something that she, I, it, it took getting you know, some clarity from Shiva Maharaj what happened. Like the sequence of events of when Krishna spoke um, Uddhava Gita to Uddhava and then what happened after that. It's really complicated. But it's there. The pieces are there. Just you have to fit this puzzle piece together with that puzzle piece together with that puzzle piece. There's like nine steps. And once the, once the nine steps are understood, it's all very clear. But it's not in one place. And it's not done deliberately for puzzling us. One can say it's just the spontaneous um, exposition of Shukadeva Swami. And he's not, you know, he's not bound by chronology. He's, he's moved by ecstasy. That's one explanation, anyway. Yes. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, many of these past tense, um, it's actually very wonderful and very amazing to hear about that 16,100 gopis being carried out. Um, with Dwaraka and then getting married to Krishna in the Shamantaka jewel. It's it's so amazing. Um, I was thinking these have not been mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. So are they just revealed to for this case Rupa Goswami or I mean, just what? Have they been just revealed to our Acharyas, like Rupa Goswami or the no, other? No, they're, they're, they're taking pieces from here and there. It's, it's, in, it's in Padma Purana, one of the sources, and other places and other places. Nana, Shastra, Vachara, Nana. So they know all the, you know, we have computers and they just have didactic memories. So this Lalita Madhava, Vidagda Madhava are not completely the... Well, there's, there's certainly realization of how this, the, the flow of events, that's not, the, the, that's not in Padra Purana, but he's filling in the places. There are his realization. Much of it is his, my understanding is this, much of it is his realization of the flow of events. But how you know, the scriptural support is there, and then there's the flow of events. Gopal Champa was composed like that also. You know, writes interspersed within a, 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 a narration. He quotes some verses. We trust them. I trust them. I have another question, Guru Maharaj, for this last box pastime. It's, it's very sweet. Uh, so behind these past tense is the purpose just for us to hear the rasa, how it's going, yeah. Yeah. and not question. Okay, after Abhuman, you gave the box, didn't he wait to see all the jewels and everything? Why did he go away? <laughs> Mine kept questioning, how's the, how's up there? How's the you can go there if you want. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Hey, Krishna Paramahana, just a curiosity question. Um, so we have description about um, Mother Yashoda and... They have a um, question about what? Um, so we have description about Mother Yashoda's austerity and Nanda Maharaj's austerities and how they got, you know, uh, Krishna is their son and then they were Drona and Dhara before their, in, their, in their previous lives. Do we have anything about Mother Kirtida and um, Krishna Bhanu? 
the description. It's the the Drona and Dara explanation is directly in the Bhagavatam, and there's commentary on what's directly in the Bhagavatam by our acharyas from other authoritative sources, etc. I but I don't know of anything that's comparable for Rishabhan and Kirti. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm not familiar with anything that's comparable for them. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Okay. Is that it? Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Good day.